Jack and I have been home officially for one week and I thought I'd give you guys a little update. Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. If you guys are new here, my name is Emily. Welcome to my little motherhood channel where I take care of all things mom. I am just over one week postpartum. I delivered my son on Friday, the 7th of January. And today, gosh, is Sunday the 16th. We came home last Sunday. I delivered him Friday night. We stayed the 24 hour period to like monitor him and then like check his levels and stuff like that. And they wanted him to stay like just one more night. You might hear him cooing in the background. He's gonna be waking up soon. They wanted him to stay one more night. So we stayed until Sunday. We got home Sunday afternoon. So it has been a week of being at home and I just wanted to give you guys the little rundown. The first couple days, well, I mean, I'm still kind of just sore, pushing out an almost 11 pound baby for the first time, you know, delivering vaginally is an experience. I really don't know if I prefer a C-section recovery over a vaginal birth like recovery, just because there's different pains. Like with C-sections, it's kind of harder to like get out of chairs and like move around, but you don't have to deal with like, I don't know, tearing, hemorrhoids, um, like just the additional pain from tearing and stuff like that and like having the ice down there. And it, it's it, it's been very painful for me. I don't know if that is the case for everyone, but it's been very uncomfortable and uh, after like two or three days at home, I want to say it was like Monday or Tuesday, but I started getting engorged and that was very painful. With Aubrey, when I got engorged, she was still in the NICU, so I just had to deal with that like and pumping and not necessarily being engorged while trying to breastfeed. And having all of the recovery pains as well as trying to breastfeed while engorged it was I broke down one day and I was like I should totally take a picture of this and I just didn't have the energy to just just to try to explain to you guys like how miserable I was like just everything hurt my feet started to swell up actually more than they had welled up during my pregnancy so I started getting a little fearful luckily though I think like last night they looked much better not necessarily totally like back to normal but a lot better than they have been so I've been wearing my compression socks but like from head to toe like just everything was hurting and I just stood in front of the mirror like just looking at myself in pain and like crying and I broke down one day because I had to use the restroom and Aubrey like beat me to it. And then she like wouldn't get off and I was just like in so much pain. And so I started crying and then she started crying and then it was just like a cry fest. And <sighs> I'm glad that day has come and gone and things are on the bright side, but it was really rough the first couple of days. And I'm still kind of emotional, just, you know, baby blues and stuff like that. But to make matters worse, so yes, or Friday. Friday, Aubrey woke up with a cough and a low-grade fever, like 99.6 or something. And then it got up to like 100.1, and I was like really concerned. So I took her to the doctor. They tested her for both COVID and RSV, and she came back positive for COVID. We have no idea where she got this. I was tested in the hospital. I came back negative, like everyone in my household is feeling fine, no symptoms, nothing. And her cough was like a bark. So I was, you know, we were hoping like both tests would come back negative and they would just rule it as croup. But she has COVID, so she showed symptoms on Friday. The doctor said the first two days are the most contagious. So that was yesterday and Friday, so the last two days. Luckily, today she is on the mend, but I will show you a little video that Juan captured yesterday, kind of on her worst day, and I've been isolating myself and with, with Jack, and, Je and Juan has been with Aubrey, so it broke my heart to see this video 
thankfully I've gotten an update video and I'll show you guys that too. But here is the video that Juan sent me of her yesterday. And on the first day she had energy, we were still playing. She just kind of got scared of her cough. And towards the end, she didn't nap that day. And she was just kind of like, you know, getting tired or whatever. So seeing this video just broke my heart not to be there to comfort her. So here's a little glance at what I sobbed over. You want to send mommy a message? Aubrey? I love you, mommy. You want to send mommy a message? You want to send Jack a message? You want to send... What about for Nanny and Papa? Um, Nanny and Papa. I just want me and me and you. Okay. So I don't know if that breaks your heart watching it, but it it really broke mine. Um, but thankfully this morning Juan sent me a couple more videos and I will insert those here. Apparently she doesn't have a fever. Her breathing kind of sounds like more just normal. She is in higher spirits. And the only thing that she's really complaining of apparently is like a sore throat. So um, here's today's video on Sunday. What do you want to tell me? I love mommy. And what else? Look, look at the camera. I love daddy and mommy and me. Hi, mommy. Say hi, baby Jack. Hi, baby Jack. What do you What do you want to say to mommy when you see her? I love mommy. Daddy, who was that sickle banana? You owe me, daddy. Mm -hmm. Who left it there? Daddy, who left a knife? That's for you to cut your banana. Daddy, we're gonna be big. We can do tiny ones for Aubrey. Good job. Ooh, there's another one. So as you can see, she appears to be much better. I'm very thankful for that. I have been like asking for prayers. And you know, the thing that makes me sad is like tomorrow is gonna be Jack's baptism and it's my birthday tomorrow when I'm filming. We were gonna like celebrate with everyone. And I know like, you know, the celebration can obviously be delayed and whatever, but with having such like a rough week of trying to breastfeed and you know having really sore and cracked nipples and like bleeding and just everything like I was really looking forward to my birthday that is one of the things I look forward to every year being the middle child that's like my day you know I get to be the center of attention so it's something I look forward to and it was like it's kind of being taken away or delayed or whatever just because of the situation and obviously that is not important compared to Aubrey getting better and the rest of us staying healthy and Jack staying protected and all of that but you know it was like for my mental health like it was something I was looking forward to and so it's been a struggle like kind of coping with plans getting changed I don't like <laughs> changes in plans so that was not the way I thought my first postpartum week would be. I did not think I would have to also deal with a three-year-old with COVID, but you know, thankfully the doctor said like most kids her age recover within five days, they're like back to normal, you're good to go. And the first two are kind of like the worst and the most contagious. So we are on day three and things are looking up and I feel just blessed that they're looking up because I know that that's not the case for everyone. You know, there are those more rare occasions where that's not the case. And so I feel blessed in that sense. But there was on Friday, I definitely had the woe is me, why me, why now type of feelings. And 
I'm not proud of it because it's like there are so many blessings in my life that I have to be grateful for and things could be so much worse. And then I think for those of you who, you know, are Christian or whatever, like think of the book of Job who had like everything taken away from him and he still was so faithful to God. And so it's like, I am not nearly as miserable as he was, but to me, like in this moment, it's a big deal. And with hormones and everything, like it just is elevated. So yeah. I knew the first week was gonna be hard. I didn't know it was gonna end up being so difficult and like being isolated from my daughter has been a struggle. And something else that's been a struggle actually now that I'm thinking about it is, you know, obviously my attention coming home has been more focused on Jack because I'm the one who's feeding him. I'm the one who's caring for him. And I felt kind of like more distant from Aubrey like I, I left you know when I my water broke and I gave her a big hug and it's like because my attention was focused on the baby more I felt like guilty that I'm not interacting with her the same way or you know and it, it probably is just my emotions and then there's the added feelings of with Aubrey when she was a baby, I did not feel very like affectionate towards her or protective over her. I just kind of felt like, okay, this is a baby that I have to take care of now. <laughs> Sorry to future Aubrey if you're watching this, I still love you very much. Um, and in some sense, I have to actively love you more when you were a baby than with Jack. But yeah, with Aubrey, like, I didn't feel as like gushy, like, oh, my baby, you know, whatever with her as I do with Jack. And that could be because they whisked her off to the NICU before I got to hold her with Jack. I got to hold him like right away. I got to start nursing him. Like he's a much better nurser than Aubrey was when she was his age. Like right about now is when she came home from the NICU. And then we still struggled with breastfeeding for a good couple of weeks. And right now we're getting good latches every once in a while. It is kind of painful still. I'm very sore and tender and like sensitive if anything gets touched. But Jack is doing so much better like nursing wise than Aubrey did. And so like, I think because of all of those good things, like having a successful VVAC, holding him, nursing him, being with him right away, like having him be pretty much healthy. Um, he had some jaundice, but that's kind of tapered off. You know, like I feel just kind of more affectionate towards him. And then there is this aspect of like him being my little boy. You know, I, I don't know if it's because of that or just because of all the other circumstances, but I just feel a little bit more affectionate and like protective and like my baby, you know, than I did with Aubrey. And so that is a new feeling for me and I'm grateful for it because it was not fun and it was kind of, it, it made me feel guilty as a first time mom, not feeling like overjoyed or gushy towards my baby um, as is often portrayed in movies and just, you know, everyone who feels gushy over their baby announces it to the world. And then those of us who didn't feel that initially feel like we're a bad mom or something like that. So, that is another difference in my experience with Jack compared to Aubrey. I still love them equally, but you have to love them differently. And so obviously with Aubrey, when I didn't have those gushy feelings, I had to actively love her more, you know, or it like it came, yeah, I had to actively love her more because it didn't come as easily to do the things that needed to be done. Like if I have to change Jack's diaper, it's easier to do it because I feel more gushy about him. Um, but with Aubrey, I have to, I had to like be more, make a conscious decision. Like I'm loving you right now. And that's the way it is for other, other relationships too. So, you know, I'm, it's nice that I get to experience both and that it's not like I feel distant all over again. So there's hope to anyone who has experienced that in the past and is pregnant again or expecting or wants to get pregnant again, you know, it's not always gonna be the same. The other day I was, I'm like wearing the same stuff all the time, but um, I did kind of 
videotape my belly just to kind of see like one week's difference. I don't really think I can tell too much. Uh, I don't think my belly's gone down too much. And I don't really expect it to. I kind of think, well, obviously my uterus is, is getting smaller, but I don't expect to bounce back right away. Uh, it really took me until Aubrey started sleeping through the night to really start losing weight the last time. So, you know, it is what it is. I will continue to go down. I did TMI, did successfully poop. It took a, like probably four or five days. And um, I've been taking Motril, Motril, Tylenol, Motrin, stool softeners, and my prenatal vitamins in some concoction throughout the day. So thankfully, you know, that's been taken care of. I think the hemorrhoid stuff is still going on, unfortunately, so hopefully that like goes away because that is not comfortable and like still having like the tear and the stitches down there, like it's, it's not fun. Uh, this is where like having the C-section was like, yeah, I'm recovering from surgery, but like you don't have to deal with all of this other stuff. So I'm not really enjoying that part of the recovery, but I don't think there is anyone who would enjoy that part of the recovery, <laughs> to be honest. And then I guess the only other update that I can really think of is like as far as sleeping goes, right? Jack appears to have two different types of cycles. He either wakes up and like, you know, I either nurse and change him or change him and nurse him. And he'll go like right back down to sleep for like a good two to three hours. Or he'll like wake up, kind of like, I'll change him, I'll nurse him, I'll put him down. He might be cranky. I'll pick him up. I'll nurse him again. I'll change him again. And he's like up for like, he's like up and dozy and then up and dozy and whatever for like a two to three hour span. And then finally, after like the last feed <laughs> of like four or five feeds, he'll go down for like three hours and then probably wake up and then go back down. And he'll have those awake times like two or three times a day. One for sure in the middle of the night. So like last night it was from like, I want to say midnight or 1 a.m. to like 3 a.m., but he was just kind of awake, he was gassy, he was cranky, he was hungry, he was poopy, it was like everything. But I laid him down at three, we woke up at six, I fed him, I changed him, and I laid him back down, and we woke up at nine, so I'm not getting like consecutive big chunks of sleep, but I'm getting like two, two to three hours, maybe, you know, in the middle of the night, if I can squeeze it in. And then I tried to nap during the day, so, when we woke up at like nine, I fed him on both sides. I changed him and he's been sleeping for the three hours and he's kind of squirming a little bit in the background. So he'll be waking up and then I don't really know if he's gonna be like half awake or if he'll go back to sleep. But you know, we're, we're kind of making it work. It is a struggle sometimes to wake up and have to like be up for three hours kind of caring for him when I haven't rested much but I do turn on the light or try to like play a show or keep something to stimulate me so that I don't fall asleep like holding him or anything like that. And I think for the most part, I've been able to handle it pretty well. There was one night where it was just like, he stayed up a lot longer than I was expecting. And I just texted my mom. I was like, this is a rough night. So she took him in the morning when I think he was finally almost ready to fall asleep. I think he might have been still hungry and I just didn't know that that was like his routine and you know, whatever. So she took him and I was able to like get two or three hours of sleep and I had a little bit of milk stashed in the fridge so she feeds him through a syringe when she does kind of try to give him some extra milk. But aside from that night, I do think I'm handling it pretty well. I'm still tired, but like I'm getting enough little chunks here and there of rest that makes it bearable. So we'll see how things change in you know the coming weeks, but that's just kind of how our first week has been. And obviously I've been rambling on for a really long time, so I'm gonna wrap up this one week postpartum video for you guys. I'd like to thank you for watching and for supporting me and for praying for me. I, these, the prayers that you guys send mean the world to me. I'm thankful that I was able to push this little guy out and I will end it with this is, you know, 
I really felt like less of a woman because I couldn't push out Aubrey and I was expecting him to be a lot smaller and God healed my heart by saying you're not less of a woman and he made it so I pushed out a baby that was almost a pound bigger <laughs> so thank you for your prayers not only for the v-back but for that healing that I needed <laughs> obviously I, I needed that so I really appreciate your guys's prayers I'd like to thank you for watching and invite anyone who's new to subscribe and stick around and see all that I have to offer and I will catch you guys in the next one to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.